Mythology is not a lie, for it is a presentation in symbolic images of the energies of the psyche. The rich world. What is this tugging that pulls you backwards? What is it that stops you from streaming onwards into life? At the end of the road lies the gaping grave. Will you confront it? Can you? Can you live in the face of inevitable loss? The ancient Greek story of the poet Orpheus is a story of death, a rebirth. It is a story of what it means to be mortal, to lose, to be swept along by time and to confront the world with all its terrible monstrosities and to learn to live in spite of them. It is a story of the immortal love of mortals. Orpheus was the son of Apollo and so was a demigod, a poet and singer which in the ancient world were one and the same. And when he sung, the very stones and rivers wept. The raging furies filled with tears and the wheel of fate stopped turning in its frenzy. According to the Greek myth, Orpheus had just married Eurydice and was deeply in love. But cruel fate would have it that while walking carelessly through the sun-swept grasses like spring herself, the bride stepped on a snake. Pierced by its venom, the girl tripped, falling, stumbled into death. The Roman poet Ovid tells us that Orpheus sang loud his loss to everyone on earth, and when this was done, his wailing voice, his lyre, and himself came weaving through the tall gates of Hades, down to the world of death and flowing darkness to tell the story of his grief again. Ovid says, he took his way through crowds of drifting shades who had escaped their graves to hear his music, until at last stood before the rulers of the underworld, tuned up his lyre, and cleared his throat to sing. O king and queen of this vast darkness where all who were born of earth at last return, my mission is to find Eurydice, a girl whose thoughts were innocent and carefree, yet tripped upon a snake who struck his poison into her veins. Then her short walk was done. And look what he says of love. However much I took her loss serenely, a god called love had greater strength than I. I do not know how well he's known down here, but up on earth, his name's on every tongue. Then he makes his plea. So at your mercy, and by the eternal darkness that surrounds us, I ask you to unspin the fatal thread, too swiftly run, too swiftly cut away, that was my bride's brief life. Let her come back to me to share my love. Yet if the fates say no, here shall I stay, two deaths in one, my death as well as hers and all of Hades wept. This descent into the underworld is called a catabasis, a literal going down, and is a mytheme which only the gods can endure. In other words, make no mistake, Jesus had his predecessors. Another recurring theme that you'll find in ancient Greek myth is that the gods would punish human beings for the most arbitrary transgressions, just like life. After wiping away their tears, the gods of Hades tell Orpheus that they will allow him to take Eurydice back up to the world of light and life, but on one condition, that while ascending towards the world, he cannot look back at her. Ovid writes, They climbed the hill through clouds, pitch dark and gloomy, and as they neared the surface of the earth, the poet, fearful that she'd lost her way, glanced backwards with a look that spoke his love, then saw her gliding into deep darkness as he reached out to hold her, she was gone. He had embraced a world of emptiness. She answered him with one last faint, goodbye, an echo of her voice from the deep. Goodbye. A few short years ago, a very close friend of mine had a mental breakdown. I had to book him into the psychiatric ward with my own hands. It broke me. During my visits, we would take long walks in the yard, talking. I discerned his all-consuming obsession, time, the fleetingness of life. As Pindar said of human beings, creatures of a day. He wanted to go back, with all his heart, all his focus, he wanted to go back to a time bathed in golden sunlight. In other words, back to a time that never really existed. At the end of the road lies the gaping of the grave. Time rushes onwards, and we can never go back. If you swim against the stream, you'll only tire yourself out. And we spoke about this for days. You have to go with the stream. Whether our conversations had any impact, I don't know. But I do know that the moment he accepted that the stream does flow onwards and cannot be stopped no matter what we do, 
he began to emerge from his illness, slowly but surely, back from hell and into the light, undergoing his own catabasis. To accept your own mortality is the beginning of living. This was the very moral of the story in the Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh. What you seek, you shall never find. For when the gods made man, they kept immortality to themselves. Fill your belly. Day and night make merry. Let days be full of joy. Love the child that holds your hand. Let your wife delight in your embrace. For these alone are the concerns of man. We lose our loved ones. We lose the things that we love. They fade into the world of endless darkness behind us. And in the end, so will we. The past is past, but the present belongs to us. Orpheus tried to rescue his love Eurydice from death, but in doing so, she died twice over. His love died twice over. What the ancient poets are telling us is that most of our sufferings stem from the rejection, the denial, the repudiation of our own mortality. But to live is to courageously move towards the ocean that all of our mortal rivers flow towards and eventually will spill into. So live deeply, love deeply, and no matter what you lose along the way, keep moving forward. And remember, whatever happens, don't look back. The Written World Life Lessons from Literature